everyone, I'm Adam Harrison from Learn Your Land, and in this video what I'd like to do is to help you differentiate between two species of plants. These two species, although they're in the same family of plants, the dogbane family, Apocynaceae, and they share somewhat similar morphological features, meaning whenever you look at it, they resemble one another somewhat in certain stages of their development. They're not the same species, and one of them is edible, common milkweed, and the other one, not so much. The other one's considered toxic, which is dogbane, and also Indian hemp. Now, even if you're not interested in foraging for plants, if that's not your thing, that's okay, because you know it's still important to be able to identify things in our environment, to be able to identify the different organisms that inhabit our area and our land, because there's a direct correlation, direct positive correlation between the amount of things that we can identify, the amount of things that we are familiar with and comfortable with in our surroundings, and the amount of time that we spend in a place like this. And it's my observation, it's what I've noticed, and you really can't convince me otherwise, that the more time we spend in a place like this, the healthier we become. And I know you wanna become healthier. Nobody wants to feel bad. Not only healthier, but the more time we spend in a place like this, the happier we become as well. And not just a fleeting happiness that just comes and goes, but an overall sense of contentment, fulfillment, satisfaction in life, where things just you know start making sense finally. So stay tuned, we're gonna start with milkweed, and then we're gonna move on to dogbane. Common milkweed, or Asclepia syriaca, is a perennial member of the dogbane family, or Apocynaceae. And worldwide, there are dozens of species of milkweed. Here in Pennsylvania, there are at least 11 different species. We're just focusing on common milkweed in this video. This is frequently found in roadsides, waste ground, old farmland, even new farmland. You don't really see it here in the understory. You have to go out into the open. You'll usually see colonies of this plant, not just one or two stalks, but you usually see a lot of it. Now this plant starts to appear in May, and you'll see the shoots starting to appear from the ground. And these shoots have leaves that are opposite one another, and they are clasping the stalk. If you would look underneath the leaves, you would see that they're slightly hairy. Not in all species of milkweed, but at least in Asclepia syriaca. You flip it upside down, you'll see the leaves are slightly hairy. Now if you would cut the stalk in half, if you would break it, you would see first that it's hollow, but also a milky latex comes out of it. And that's one of the reasons they call it milkweed. The flower buds appear in June and July, and at first they're closed, obviously, and then they open up into these beautiful purplish, pinkish, greenish flowers that will eventually develop into these very unique looking fruit pods that are green. They've got these little wart-like projections on it, and at first they're small, but then they mature to about two to three inches in length. Inside of the developing seeds, at first they're very silky, if you would crack it open prematurely, you would see it's very white and silky inside. But then these seeds mature, whenever this plant senesces, the seed pods break open and they can be carried away in the wind. Now as I mentioned before, common milkweed, Asclepia syriaca, is a choice wild vegetable. It's one of my favorites, I like to harvest many parts of this plant. And before you harvest this plant and start cooking it, understand that all parts of this plant should be cooked first. You really don't want to eat this plant raw. And what does that mean? Well, you could cook it in about eight to 10 minutes of boiling water and then just dump that water out. Or in the case of the flower buds, which I'll talk about, you can actually stir fry those. So the first part that you can consume whenever it first appears are the developing shoots. So whenever the shoots appear, you know, throughout the month of May, at least here in Pennsylvania, those shoots can be harvested. And when the leaves are still clasped along the stem, that's the best time to harvest it. As it gets to be too tall and then you know the flower buds start to appear, the plant just becomes a little too tough, a little too fibrous to consume. Whenever you cut the stalk in half, check to make sure that it's hollow inside because dogbane is not going to be hollow. But milkweed will be hollow inside and you're not gonna see a lot of those reddish hues along the stalk either. Now, once the flower buds appear, you can harvest those as well. And it's kind of like broccoli because broccoli is unopened flower buds, right? And so the milkweed flower buds, whenever they are unopened, you could harvest those. And those are the parts that I like to stir fry in a little butter or olive oil. And I think that goes very well as a side dish. Whenever the flowers appear, you can eat the flowers as well. And then the fruit pods, however, when they're only about an inch or less in length, as they get a little longer, it just becomes too tough to consume that outer green pot. But you can still harvest that inner silky material and you can eat that as well. But remember, cook all parts of the milkweed plant. Now to differentiate this between dogbane, I'm gonna to get to the dogbane characteristics. No parts of common milkweed should be bitter. Even when you nibble on the stalk raw, it should be very mild and have somewhat of a pleasant flavor. If you detect a lot of bitterness in this plant, it's probably not milkweed. It's probably dogbane or just another plant altogether. 
So now we are going to be discussing dogbane, the somewhat similar looking plant compared to milkweed. Now this is, no surprise, in the dogbane family. And the genus is Apocyanum. Here in Pennsylvania, we have at least two species. We have spreading dogbane. We also have Indian hemp. But they both go by the name dogbane. Now, when it first appears in the spring, it could be growing right next to milkweed. This is when most people confuse milkweed for dogbane because the shoots look somewhat similar. Dogbane, when it appears, has somewhat of a reddish hue to it and a whitish bloom as well. Common milkweed won't really have that whitish bloom. If you take your finger and rub it up and down the stalk, you're not going to get that white material on your finger, nor does it have a lot of reddish hues on the stalk. Now, I'm talking about milkweed. Milkweed might have reddish specks on it, but it doesn't have that reddish hue that characterizes the dogbane stem. Now, when you look at the two side by side, common milkweed is somewhat more stout. It's a little thicker of a shoot. And as you start to see more and more of it, you'll definitely develop an eye for it. Whenever you look at dogbane, it's much thinner. It's much more tall than it is wide. And this helps to differentiate between the two. But the leaves can be clasping in dogbane, just like in milkweed. But if you see the two side by side, you would see that milkweed is definitely a little thicker and dogbane is thinner. If you would cut the stalk of dogbane, inside it is solid. Now remember, common milkweed is hollow inside, but the inside of dogbane is solid. Also, like common milkweed, if you would cut dogbane, there's a milky latex that will come out of dogbane. So both of these do have that milky latex, but if you look inside, dogbane is solid inside and milkweed is hollow. Another unique trait about dogbane and Indian hemp is that both of these plants have branching, unlike common milkweed. Rarely, if ever, will you see common milkweed branching. It's usually a single stalk with opposite leaves. You see the flower buds, you see the flowers, and then you see the fruit pods. Now with dogbane and Indian hemp, it branches out, so you'll see multiple branching, especially as it matures. Now when it's younger, still in its young shoot stage, throughout May, you won't really see this branching, so you'll have to wait to see when it branches. However, remember that common dogbane is a much thinner stalk, and then common milkweed is a much stouter stalk. The flowers are different, they don't really look like one another, and also the fruit and the seeds of common dogbane and the dried stalks look much different compared to milkweed. Milkweed has that characteristic green fruit pod that has those wart-like projections. Common dogbane does not have that whatsoever. And if you look at common dogbane, the dried stalk in the wintertime, it looks much different. And if that's when you want to identify it, that's a great time to because then you can monitor that spot and then come back the next year and see the shoots starting to appear. And then you will know, okay, that's my dog bait spot. And this is my milkweed spot over here because you're looking at these uh, winter identifying traits, these winter stocks to help differentiate them in the springtime when they appear. There's a good reason we don't want to consume dogbane or Indian hemp. It contains a class of compounds known as cardiac glycosides and a specific class within that grouping known as cardenolides. And these are compounds that are spread out in at least 12 different botanical families. However, they seem to be concentrated in Apocynaceae or the dogbane family. And what these compounds do is that they affect heart function. And specifically what they do is they affect the sodium potassium pumps in the plasma membranes of our cells and they don't always affect them in positive ways. Now conventional medicine uses cardiac glycosides, especially in the treatment of congestive heart failure. And when you look at the traditional uses of dogbane, it hasn't just been used for fibers. I'll talk about that in a second, but it has been used medicinally to affect heart function. Now if that's something that you want to look into, you know, I'm not telling you to do it, but I encourage you to do your own research on that if you want to use dogbane at all medicinally. But remember, it has been used for specific conditions in very specific doses, and it's been used by cultures that have used it for a very long period of time. So if you want to use it, definitely do your own research and maybe speak to somebody or work with somebody who has used it very intentionally in the past. But you know, for intents and purposes, dogbane is not edible. We consider it toxic, but common milkweed is edible. Now common milkweed has some of these cardiac glycosides as well. However, they have different compounds, not ones found in dogbane and not in the same concentration that's found in dogbane. So that's why whenever we consume milkweed, it's rather pleasant, it's not that bitter. Whenever you consume dogbane or Indian hemp, you get those bitter cardiac glycosides, those cardenolides into your mouth and you just wanna spit it out almost immediately. Now dogbane is still a very practical plant and a very useful plant to know, especially from a primitive skills standpoint because the fibers are unparalleled when it comes to other plants here in Pennsylvania. If you attend any primitive skills workshop or class and you're talking about natural cordage, 
the instructors will almost always talk about common dog bane and you would want to use it when the stalks you know start to die away they start to senesce and they become dried and you can still see them throughout the winter months heck you can even see them right now and if you would you know peel apart some of these fibers you could do something known as reverse wrapping you can make very strong cordage that you can't really make with a lot of other plants here in pennsylvania so it's still a very useful plant mainly for utilitarian purposes when foraging for anything, whether they're plants or mushrooms, it's essential that we do so with intention, especially when foraging for milkweed. It's important that we go out with a conservation mindset, always with a species longevity in mind. I'm sure we've heard about the monarch butterfly and how its numbers are in massive decline. And this is mainly due to habitat destruction, deforestation in its winter home, and also the loss of milkweed in farmlands that are sprayed, heavily sprayed, with herbicides. The monarch butterfly absolutely requires the milkweed plant in order to lay its egg and then the larva feeds solely on the milkweed plant. And so if we are going out there foraging and exacerbating this issue even more, well we could be contributing somewhat to maybe a very, very small degree to this habitat loss as well. So whenever we go out there, let's keep this in mind and let's try to practice non-lethal harvesting measures whenever possible. So maybe instead of harvesting all the shoots from a colony, wait until the flower buds appear and we can harvest the flower buds or harvest the flowers, some of them, not all of them of course, or we can wait until the fruit pods appear and harvest some of those fruit pods. We can harvest some of the seeds, maybe from people who are growing milkweed, we can harvest those seeds and we can plant them back ensuring that the species will be here not only for our generation but future generations as well and maybe just forage the species on your property first. And if this is your first introduction to milkweed and consuming milkweed, learn how to do it in a sustainable way on your property so if you do go out into wilder lands, to wilder lands to harvest milkweed, you will already have that stewardship mindset available. You know, milkweed is such a familiar face of the summer months and I do have a, a very intimate relationship with milkweed. I've been utilizing it for many years and I would love to see you develop a relationship with milkweed as well and I promise I won't get jealous you know, I have a relationship with it you know, there's enough to go around for everybody let's make sure that there's enough to go around for everybody as well by planting back thanks so much for watching this video I truly appreciate it hope you learned something about milkweed and the differences between milkweed and dogbane and Indian hemp I encourage you to go to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email at the bottom of the website so that we could stay in touch if you're watching this on YouTube I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the videos that I plan on releasing Thanks again for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.